Hello everyone, and welcome. My name is Dr. James Miller, and I have been practicing medicine for more than 20 years. And over the course of my career, I have seen thousands of patients who came to me worried about their memory, worried about their brain, and worried about what the future might hold if their memory continued to fade. So today, I want to share with you everything I know about memory loss, about how the brain really works, about why memory sometimes seems to slip away as we age, and most importantly, what we can do to protect it, to strengthen it, and to give ourselves the best possible chance to keep a sharp mind throughout life. And I am going to speak to you not like a lecture in medical school, but like a friend and a doctor who has walked with many people through this journey. So relax, maybe grab a cup of tea or coffee, and let us dive deep into the fascinating world of the brain and memory. First of all, let us understand what memory really is. Because when we say memory, we often think of remembering names, faces, phone numbers, or where we put our keys. But memory is much more than that. It is the foundation of who we are. It is our identity. It is the accumulation of every experience every lesson, every relationship, every laugh, and every tear that we have stored in our brain. And the brain does this through a miraculous network of about 80, 6 billion neurons that talk to each other through trillions of connections. And those connections form patterns, and those patterns are memory. When you recall the smell of your grandmother, S, kitchen, or the words of your favorite song, or the directions to your childhood school, that is memory in action, a symphony of neurons firing in harmony to recreate a moment from the past. And when memory starts to falter, it feels like we are losing not only information, but part of ourselves. Now why does memory decline? Why do so many people, after the age of 50 or 60, complain that their memory is not what it used to be? Why do some people, even in their 40s, begin to worry when they forget a word or misplace something. Well, let me tell you, some amount of forgetfulness is absolutely normal. The brain, like every organ, changes with age. Neurons may fire a little slower. Blood flow may decrease slightly. The processing speed is not as fast as when we were 20. But that does not mean we are destined to lose our memory completely. In fact, science shows that many people maintain sharp memory well into their 80s and 90s if they take care of their brain. So the good news is that decline is not inevitable. We have a lot of power. The main factors that accelerate memory loss include poor sleep, chronic stress, uncontrolled blood pressure, diabetes, lack of exercise, poor nutrition, smoking, excessive alcohol, and of course, neurological conditions like Alzheimer's disease or other dementias. But before we panic, let us remember that lifestyle plays a huge role, and what we do every single day 
has more influence than our genetics in many cases. For example, studies show that exercise, especially aerobic exercise, like brisk walking, cycling, swimming, dancing, increases blood flow to the brain, stimulates the growth of new neurons in the hippocampus, which is the memory center of the brain, and improves mood and sleep, which also protect memory. And you do not have to run marathons. Even 30 minutes a day of moderate activity makes a difference. Nutrition is another cornerstone. The Mediterranean diet. Rich in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, nuts, fish, and olive oil has been repeatedly shown to lower the risk of memory decline. And why? because it reduces inflammation. IMPROVE's vascular health and provides omega-3 fatty acids that strengthen the neuronal membranes and antioxidants that protect brain cells from damage. So simply adding more colorful vegetables, berries, leafy greens, and fish like salmon, or sardines twice a week can give your brain a real boost. Sleep is like the brain's housekeeping system. During deep sleep, the brain literally washes away toxins through a system called the glymphatic system, and it consolidates memory, meaning it transfers short-term memories into long-term storage. So, if you are skimping on sleep or suffering from insomnia, you are robbing your brain of the chance to do its most important work. And that is why people who sleep poorly are at higher risk of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. So, make sleep a priority. Seven to nine hours, dark, quiet room no screens before bed. Stress is another killer of memory. When we are under chronic stress, the hormone cortisol floods the brain, damages neurons, especially in the hippocampus, and makes it harder to form or retrieve memories. So finding ways to manage stress is not a luxury. It is a necessity, whether that is meditation, prayer, deep breathing, yoga, nature walks, or simply laughter with friends. Find your stress relief. Now let us talk about mental exercise, because just as muscles need physical exercise to stay strong, the brain needs mental exercise to stay sharp. And the key is challenge. The brain grows and forms new connections when it is challenged. So if you are only watching TV or scrolling on your phone passively, the brain is not really working. But if you are learning a new language, playing an instrument, reading complex books, playing chess, solving puzzles, engaging in meaningful conversations. Your brain is alive and it grows. And one of my favorite prescriptions to patients is to always learn something new. No matter your age, the harder it feels, the more your brain benefits. Social interaction is also medicine for the brain. Loneliness and isolation accelerate memory loss. While friendship, community, and love protect it. When you talk to others, you engage multiple areas of the brain. Language, emotion, memory, and that stimulation keeps neurons firing. So stay connected. Join a club. 
volunteer, talk to neighbors, call family, do not isolate yourself. Now many people ask me about supplements. They ask, should I take Jinko? Should I take vitamin E? Should I buy those memory pills advertised on TV? And my answer is cautious. Some supplements may help if you are deficient. For example, vitamin B12 deficiency can cause memory problems. So if your levels are low, you should supplement. Vitamin D is also important. But for most people, the foundation should be food, exercise, sleep, and medical care, not magic pills. Because most supplements marketed for memory have weak evidence, and some are a waste of money. But if you want to use something, always talk to your doctor first. Of course, we cannot ignore medical conditions. If you have hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, or thyroid problems, those must be managed because uncontrolled vascular disease damages the brain, causes many strokes, and accelerates dementia. So regular checkups, taking medications as prescribed, monitoring your numbers, those are brain protection strategies too. Now let me give you a very practical three-minute exercise that anyone can do daily to wake up the brain. It is simple. It combines movement, breathing, and focus. And here it is. Stand up. Stretch your arms wide. Take three deep breaths. Then march in place, lifting your knees high while clapping your hands in rhythm. Count out loud from one to thirty. Then switch and count backwards from thirty to one. Then stop and close your eyes. Recall three things you are grateful for today. Say them out loud. And finally, take another three deep breaths and sit down. The whole thing takes three minutes. But what you have done is increase blood flow, coordinate movement and cognition, practice working memory by counting, activate positive emotion with gratitude and regulate stress with breathing. This kind of combined stimulation is what the brain loves. And if you do it daily, it becomes a habit that tells your brain it is alive and ready. Let me also address a myth. Many people fear every little forgetfulness is Alzheimer's. But the truth is Alzheimer's disease is more than simple forgetfulness. It is progressive. It affects daily function. It interferes with language reasoning, and behavior. And it is not just forgetting where you put your glasses. It is forgetting how to use the glasses. So if you or your loved one has significant impairment, you must see a doctor. But if it is mild lapses, do not panic. Instead, take it as a signal to improve lifestyle. Over the years, I have seen patients turn their memory around. I had a gentleman in his seventies who was forgetting appointments, losing track of conversations, very worried. But we worked on his sleep apnea. We adjusted his medications. We encouraged daily walking and a diet shift. And within months, his clarity improved remarkably. Not perfect, but enough that he felt in control again. And I have seen women in their 60s 
who started taking dance classes, learned Spanish, and told me their brain felt ten years younger. These stories are real. The brain can change. Remember the principle of neuroplasticity. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Meaning, the more you use a pathway, the stronger it gets. And even older brains can grow new synapses. So, do not believe the myth that you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Science has proven otherwise. Now, as we move toward the conclusion, let me give you a checklist. Number one, move your body daily. Number two, eat colorful, natural foods. Number three, sleep well. Number four, manage stress. Number five, challenge your brain with new learning. Number six, stay socially connected. Number seven, see your doctor and manage medical conditions. And number eight, enjoy life because joy itself is protective. Laughter, music, purpose, these are as much medicine as pills. In my 20 plus years of practice, I have learned that memory is precious, but it is also resilient, and we should not live in fear, but in empowerment, because we have tools and even if we face disease, adapt and maintain dignity and connection. So my message to you today is simple. Do not wait. Start today. Take one step. Maybe tonight, go to bed earlier. Tomorrow, take a walk. This week, try a new recipe or call an old friend. And every day, remind your brain that it matters, that you care for it, and it will respond. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope this conversation has inspired you. I hope you feel less fear and more control. And if you found value, share it with others. Because memory is not just personal, it is collective. We hold each other's memories too. And when we care for our own brain, we care for our families, our communities, and our world.